It's a, thank you very much, Ansara Correllera and co-founder of uh, e &I Space. I'm very happy to be here today, I will say, to see all my colleagues, professors. Uh, I, when I started the PhD um, here in the department, I thought this was, it was going to be the most challenging thing I was going to do in my professional career. But then we started the company. Uh, and this was, uh, has, it's been an absolutely, uh, I would say, amazing journey with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, moments to remember, I would say. Okay, so, so my presentation today, I don't want to get into the details of what we're doing at TNI because I think that's not the goal of the, of the talk today, but more about entrepreneurship and how we created the company. Um, let's say because the three co-founders of TNI Space, we actually did the PhD here in the department. So we met here and we decided to, to, to create this company. But of course, since some of you maybe will may be interested in working for us, doing a PhD or even as a postdoc position, I will very, very briefly summarize what we are doing. So we are in a space and we define ourselves at, as an in-space mobility company. And I want to recall this part because we, we say we are not another propulsion company because we are not doing, <laughs> uh, let's say, only propulsion, but we are trying to solve the whole in-space mobility problem. So I put this image because we all know how, how satellites are launched into space, no? Let's say on top of the big rockets made by companies or, or institutions such as NASA or SpaceX. But what happens next? Let's say, what, how do these satellites reach their final destinations? How do they avoid possible collisions? How do they change orbits? This is what is called, it's been named now in the industry as last mile delivery in space, and it's exactly what we are doing at TNI. So the industry is solving this problem in two different ways. One is what they call orbital transfer vehicles, which are basically like buses with a lot of satellites that they release the satellites in different orbits. And the other option is in-space propulsion, which is the rocket directly integrated into the satellite. And this is what we are doing at TNI. For what? Well, as you can, as you already know, uh, the space sector is uh, it, it's a complete revolution nowadays. There are thousands of satellites being launched every year, and these satellites, of course, they need to perform different kinds of maneuvers, such as constellation deployment, orbit maintenance, or what we are calling now infrastructure protection, which is making sure your spacecraft is not going to become another piece of uh, space junk. So, I, just to mention that the sector is changing so much that the regula regulation is coming. So finally, regulation is coming. This means that almost all the satellites that are going to be launched into space are going to need to carry, let's say, onboard propulsion systems or different systems that will allow them to maneuver in case they are going to collide with other satellites. Just as an example, Starlink, which I'm pretty sure you already know, they perform more than 20,000 collision avoidance maneuvers since they started launching their satellites. So it's absolutely incredible. So let's talk a little bit about how we created the company. So here I'm very pleased to present my co-founders, uh, Daniel Perez and Mick Weinen, which they did the PhDs also uh, here in the aerospace department. So for us, it was absolutely crucial to, to, to do the PhDs because in, one of the most important things is that we, we met each other. No? We were able to work together uh, and, to, and to see that we could actually do great things together, no? Uh, well, actually, Mick Vanin is also a PhD now. I'm sorry for that, Mick. <laughs> He's not here, but he presented his thesis just uh, a couple of, of uh, weeks ago. So, okay, let me talk a little bit more about how we created the company, because maybe some of you are also interested. You are finishing your PhDs and you're thinking in, in creating a, a, a startup here in, in Spain. I would say that creating a space startup in Spain is even more challenging because of the fact that you are doing it in Spain, and I will explain this later. So how this happened, we, we met each other during our PhDs, as I was telling before. In 2017, we had the opportunity to go to the uh, International Electric Propulsion Conference uh, during the PhD, which is the most, uh, let's say, important conference regarding electric propulsion. Um, we were there and we, were, we did together a paper actually with our colleague also David present here in this, uh, <laughs> in this room. Uh, when it was the first time where we did like concurrent engineering between the orbital dynamics part and the hardware development of the electric propulsion system. We uh, presented a solution of how to uh, deploy 
and operate, let's say, a lunar positioning system with CubeSats, with electric propulsion in the moon, of course. And we were very happy because we won the, this competition. Uh, we were competing with uh, other teams from Michigan, uh, MIT, uh, and we, we couldn't believe it. No, that they, they gave the prize to, to a Spanish team. So we were very happy. We celebrated that night. We went partying. We spent all the money <laughs> that they gave us. <laughs> But then, of course, we were thinking like, okay, but this is great. No, like we like to work together. We are a good team. We have ideas, and we like to execute them. And this was the first time I would say we worked together, and we decided that we wanted to keep working together in the future. So in, in 2019, we we created a company, ENI Space, with uh, almost nothing. Uh, and I would say almost nothing because there are two types of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs with money and the entrepreneurs without money. <laughs> and we were the second ones, OK? So we had absolutely nothing, but we decided to create this company because we had the vision. We, were, we, we had been attending to the different conferences of electric propulsion, thanks to the PhD, actually, uh, worldwide. So we knew what people were doing in the industry. And we were seeing that they, there was not a product, a good product for the market. Like all the companies were doing, we created technologies that were not aligned with the current market needs. So we decided that we could do something better, that we needed to create a new technology that could be adopted by, by the industry, and specifically for this new space market that is uh, that, that, that we have now, no? So we created a company, we asked, of course the second step is uh, look for money. No, we need, to, we need to look for money. And this is what is more challenging in Spain. But uh, fortunately, the, we have been supported, let's say, by the public uh, funding quite a lot. Uh, since the beginning, we, we earned our first grant was from the community of Madrid, uh, this RIS3 uh, grant. After that, we had also Neotech, which is also one of the very, very important grants from the government. Um, and, and then some, some two grants also from the, from the European Commission. And like that, we started to develop the technology. I wanted to say that we are a company that we are developing technology, so we are not licensing a technology from a research center or university, but we are actually developing the technology in-house, which is even more challenging, but also more exciting because we, we, we can keep also all, the, all, the, all our know-how. No? So one of the moments that was most important is in 2021, we received uh, finally private investment. So we were the first uh, st startup in, I would say, in, in Madrid from the space sector to receive private investment, uh, 1 million euros from our current investors in Berredi. And this allowed us to actually grow the team, start, uh, let's say, keep developing the, the, the technology and, and reach 2022 with uh, our first experimental prototype that we were very happy that we were able to fly this experimental prototype in, in the Firefly Alpha 2 rocket last year. So this was a, an amazing moment for us as a company. And we actually now, where are we? Are we? I'm going to go a little bit fast here. Well, here you can see the, the, our facilities. We have uh, two vacuum chambers. They are not as big as the one at, uh, here <laughs> at the department but we are quite proud of them, actually. Um, we have our own clean room to be able to assemble and test the, the propulsion systems. And we are uh, 15 uh, very highly qualified members. And I say highly qualified because, as you can see there, the co-founders, we are PhDs, uh, but also we are doing five industrial PhDs within the company. So one third of the company is actually carrying the industrial PhD. Four with the UC3M and one with the University uh, Autónoma de Barcelona. So this is what we are developing different types of, as I will say, from the in-space mobility problem. We develop both hardware and both software. So here I want to say, actually, from the four PhDs that we have with UC3M, one is in the orbital dynamics. Uh, and he has been the main developer of 360, which has been a, it is our first product uh, in the market. It's an orbital dynamics uh, tool. Uh, and the other three PhDs are related to Athena, which is the propulsion system. This is actually the first time I'm showing this picture, so you can feel very lucky. <laughs> this is an exploded view of what is going to be our first flight model of uh, Athena, what you can see at the left. Uh, this, uh, per, we are developing this flight model with uh, the European Space Agency with one of the GSTP contracts, so they are, we are actually following all the strict engineering procedures <laughs> that are so fun. 
Uh, but we are doing this with the European uh, Space Agency. We are going to have our preliminary design review now in, in, the, in the next two couple of months. And also what we do at TNI is uh, something that I think is uh, really beautiful is that we are also, so, something that we didn't learn during the PhD, but we are actually learning now during the company is related to, oh, sorry, is related to the micro and nanotechnology since our technology relies on micro fabrication and nano fabrication techniques, which is an amazing world that actually one of our PhDs, the one with Barcelona, is he's doing this uh, industrial PhD with, uh, uh, related to manufacturing techniques. So I will say now that uh, if you, of course, uh, for me, doing a PhD inside, uh, doing the PhD was the first step to be able to start a company, a space company in Spain. Because when, if you want to start a space company, you need to be very, very, very uh, specialized in what you want to do. You need to be very technical. You need to understand very good what you are doing. Uh, the other day, someone asked me, like, everyone can start, everyone can start a, a, a space company. I was like, no, no, this is not right. There, has been a, there have been a lot of space companies that have been out there for a couple of months, some several months, but they, they are nothing if they don't have a very highly qualified team as the co-founder. So, I would like to say that it is definitely possible. Now it's a very good moment to start a company, a space company, uh, uh, in, not only in Spain, in, in, in worldwide, I will say. There are a lot of opportunities. Uh, there, are, there is funding. And, they are, and, and it's, a, I would say, a great moment to do it. And for us, it was, the, it was uh, great. So thank you very much, Manuel. Uh, that's the end. Thank you.